Good morning and welcome to Walking with Jesus Through the Word, one chapter per day. I'm Pastor Jason Van Bemmel from Forest Hill Presbyterian Church, coming to you this time from the Hall of Tyrannus here at Reaching Africa's Unreached in Moyo, Uganda. This is our main teaching room here in the Hall of Tyrannus, and uh, we are looking forward to having upwards of 50 men who will be coming today to begin training. So um, I'm recording this on Friday, July 1st, uh, releases on Saturday, July 2nd. We're beginning a new book of the Bible. So I'm in a new location here and we're beginning a new book of Bible numbers. So we're beginning numbers today and then Monday we're beginning the book of Galatians. So if you have uh, friends or family members who maybe have had an interest in joining us for this Bible reading plan or just would like to read the Bible more, now's a great time to join because we're starting new books, so they won't be in the middle of a book that we've been talking about for a while. Numbers is fresh today. Galatians is fresh on Monday. Let's pray and ask the Lord's help as we look to Numbers today. Father, thank you so much for your love for us. Thank you for sharing Christ, our hope, our joy, our salvation, our righteousness, and our peace. Thank you for giving us your word, inspired by your Holy Spirit, written down by chosen men who have given us your truth in various forms. As we begin the book of Numbers today, Father, we pray that you would help us to be attentive to your word and receptive to it. Help our minds to understand and our hearts to receive the things that you would have for us today. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. <clears throat> we are in Numbers. So just a little bit of an introduction. The book of Numbers really tells the story of the wilderness wanderings of the Israelites after Exodus, after the receiving of the law, and then into uh, the wilderness wanderings up to uh, when they're getting ready to go into the promised land. It's called Numbers because we have two numberings of the people of God, of the Israelites. The numbering of the first generation that comes out of is uh, Egypt and the Exodus, and then the numbering of the second generation, the generation that goes into the promised land under the leadership of Joshua. And so um, this is one of the Pentateuch, one of the first five books of the Bible, books of Moses. So let's begin. Uh, this chapter is largely going to be a lot of names and a lot of numbers, but it is God's word for us today. Book of Numbers, chapter one. The Lord spoke to Moses in the wilderness of Sinai, in the tent of meeting on the first day of the second month in the second year after they had come out of the land of Egypt saying, take a census of all the number of the people of Israel by clans, by father's houses, according to the number of names, every male head by head from 20 years old and upward, all in Israel who are able to go to war, you and Aaron shall list them company by company and there shall be with you a man from each tribe, each man being the head of his house, of the house of his fathers, and these are the names of the men who shall assist you. From Reuben, Eliezer, the son of Shedir. From Simeon, Shalumiel, the son of Zuri Shaddai. From Judah, Nashon, the son of Amminadab. From Issachar, Nathanael, the son of Zuar. From Zebulun, Eliab, the son of Helon. From the sons of Joseph, from Ephraim, Elishama, the son of Amahud, and from Manasseh, Gamaliel, the son of Pedazer. From Benjamin, Abaddon, the son of Gideoni. From Dan, Ahiezer, the son of Amashaddai. From Asher, Pagiel, the son of Okran. From Gad, Eliasaph, the son of Duel. From Naphtali, Ahira, the son of Enan. These were the ones chosen from the congregation, the chiefs of their ancestral tribes, the heads of the clans of Israel. Moses and Aaron took these men who had been named, and on the first day of the second month, they assembled the whole congregation together, who registered themselves by clans, by fathers' houses, according to the number of names, from 20 years old and upward, head by head, as the Lord commanded Moses. So he listed them in the wilderness of Sinai. The people of Reuben, Israel's firstborn, their generations by their clans, by their fathers' houses, according to the number of names, head by head, every male from 20 years old and upward who were able to go to war, those listed of the tribe of Reuben were 46,500. Of the people of Simeon, 
their generations, by their clans, by their father's houses, those of them who were listed according to the number of names, head by head, every male, 20 years old and upward, all who were able to go to war, those listed of the tribe of Simeon were 59,300. Of the people of Gad, their generations by their clans, by their fathers' houses, according to the number of the names from 20 years old and upward, all who were able to go to war, those listed of the tribe of Gad were 45,650. Of the people of Judah, their generations by their clans, by their fathers' houses, according to the number of names from 20 years old and upward, every male able to go to war, those listed of the tribe of Judah were 74,600. Of the people of Issachar, their generations by their clans, by their fathers' houses, according to the number of names from 20 years old and upward, every man able to go to war, those listed of the tribe of Issachar were 54,400. Of the people of Zebulun, their generations by their clans, by their fathers' houses, according to the number of names from 20 years old and upward, every man able to go to war, those listed of the tribe of Zebulun were 57,400. Of the people of Joseph, namely of the people of Ephraim, their generations by their clans, by their fathers' houses, according to the number of names from 20 years old and upward, every man able to go to war, those listed of the tribe of Ephraim were 40,500. Of the people of Manasseh, their generations by their clans, by their fathers' houses, according to the number of names from 20 years old and upward, every man able to go to war, those listed of the tribe of Manasseh were 32,200. Of the people of Benjamin, their generations by their clans, by their fathers' houses, according to the number of names from 20 years old and upward, every man able to go to war, those listed of the tribe of Benjamin were 35,400. Of the people of Dan, their generations by their clans, by their fathers' houses, according to the number of names from 20 years old and upward, every man able to go to war, those listed of the tribe of Dan were 62,700. Of the people of Asher, their generations by their clans, by their fathers' houses, according to the number of names, from 20 years old and upward, every man able to go to war, those listed of the tribe of Asher were 41,500. Of the people of Naphtali, their generations by their clans, by their fathers' houses, according to the number of names, from 20 years old and upward, every man able to go to war, those listed of the tribe of Naphtali were 53,400. Those, these are those who were listed whom Moses and Aaron listed with the help of the chiefs of Israel, 12 men, each representing his father's house. So all of those listed of the people of Israel by their father's houses from 20 years old and upward, every man able to go to war in Israel, of those listed were 603,550. But the Levites were not listed along with them by their ancestral tribe, for the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Only the tribe of Levi you shall not list, and you shall not take a census from them, of them, from among the people of Israel, by appointment, but appoint the Levites over the tabernacle of the testimony, and over all its furnishings, and all that belong to it. They are to carry the tabernacle, and all its furnishings, and they are to take care of it, and shall camp around the tabernacle. When the tabernacle is to set out, the Levites shall take it down. And when the tabernacle is to be pitched, the Levites shall set it up. And if any outsider comes near, he shall be put to death. The people of Israel shall pitch their tents by their companies, each man in his own camp, and each man by his own standard. But the Levites shall camp around the tabernacle of the testimony, so that there may be no wrath on the congregation of the people of God, of Israel. And the Levites shall keep guard over the tabernacle of the testimony. Thus did the people of Israel, they did according to all that the Lord commanded Moses. Well, that is Numbers chapter one. It's amazing to think that at the beginning of Exodus, end of Genesis, beginning of Exodus, when Joseph is providentially provided by God to save the people of God, the people of Israel, and Israel and his sons and their wives and their sons and all their households, they come down into Egypt, there are 70 persons. So you've got 70 people who come in to the land of Egypt. 400 years later, when they come out of the land of Egypt, they are 603,550. Slowly, generation by generation, child by child, year by year, 
decade by decade, God grew his people. Now, I say 603,550, but actually, if you were paying attention to the text, you know that's only the men of fighting age. So that's only the men, and it's only those of 20 years old and upward. So if there's 600,000 men, there's probably 600,000 women. So you get to about 1.2 million. And then if there's 1.2 million people over the age of 20, there's probably another 300,000 under the age of 20. Um, so you, you probably have one and a half million people who are coming out of Egypt after 70 persons went in. 70 in, one and a half million or so come out 400 years later. God is faithful. You see, that's part of what we need to see is that God's faithfulness through the ordinary means of family generation or in the church today, since we are spiritual Israel, the church, and we don't grow merely by natural generation, but we also grow by planting the churches and spreading the gospel and making disciples to the ends of the earth. It's why we're here in Uganda is to help train pastors and, and uh, teachers who will take the gospel to unreached peoples and will plant churches and will make disciples here in northern Uganda and one mile that direction is South Sudan and beyond that in the Sudan. We're here to see that spread and just as God took 70 people and made them into 1.5 million in 400 years of bondage in Egypt, so you can look at the early church and you realize that when Jesus left, there were about 120 disciples who gathered together in the upper room when the Holy Spirit was poured out. Now the Holy Spirit was poured out and that 120 grew to 3,000 that first day and then to 5,000 before long. And by the time you get 400 years later, there were millions of believers. And today, of course, there are billions, a couple of billion people around the world who call themselves Christians and who identify by the name of Jesus. It doesn't mean they're all truly redeemed, of course, but then again, of these 1.5 million, the vast majority of them were not truly redeemed, but they are still nonetheless the people of God in Israel, and God is faithful to his promises. A couple of little clarifications. It does appear to me that this counting that was done, they rounded off to the nearest 50, because every counting of every tribe either lands exactly on a 100 or on a 50. And that would seem highly implausible if they were counting each individual person. In other words, the, top, the tribe of Manasseh, 32,200. It might have been 32,212, right? Benjamin, 35,400. It might have been, it might have been 35,394, right? So I think they were rounded off to the closest 50. That's the most logical explanation for what's happening here. And so this is, uh, this is, again, they're trying to measure the size of their fighting force, of their army, and of, of the productive force, because men were the ones who would, who would um, farm the land and who would fight the battles. And that's, that's really what they're listening is the strength of the nation as a fighting and working force. And so it's over 600,000 men. Notice also that there's a place for everyone. So Israel is a nation of tribes, and there's 12 tribes that are the 12 sons of Israel. And to make sure that the, that the count would be trusted, human nature is something that God understands well and takes into account, each one of the tribes would select their chief, the most trusted guy among that tribe, to carry out the census accurately. Because these census would, would be important later when they got into the promised land eventually. They would, they would short circuit their own journey to the promised land by refusing to obey God's promises, which we'll find later in Numbers. But when they do get to the promised land, the census is gonna be used to determine which tribe goes where and how much land they get, etc. So the counting was important and it needed to be done accurately. And so to get the people to trust in the process and to participate and cooperate with the process, it's appointed over them uh, faithful men from each tribe. And the last thing we wanna see in this chapter is the special role of the Levites. The Levites are gonna come into play several times throughout the book of Numbers. Back when we were doing the Exodus and we were doing the construction of the tabernacle, some of you had asked in comments about where, how would the furniture of the tabernacle be taken care of if it was so holy and you couldn't even touch it and you know, 
it was had to be sanctified with blood and there were rules about who could enter in certain places at certain times. Well, how do you do the practical matters of maintaining the things of the tabernacle? You know, how do you sew up a tent that's sacred? How do you polish and clean all these altars and all these places that are gonna be sprinkled with blood? Well, that was the job of the Levites. The Levites were given appointment over the tabernacle of the testimony, verse 50, and over all its furnishings, over all that belongs to it. They carry it, they take care of it. So the cleaning, the maintaining, the, the inventorying, the transporting uh, was all done by the Levites. And they were holy for that purpose. Holy again means set apart by God for God. They were holy for that purpose. And so they were able to touch those things and to work on those things because they were God's selected instruments to do that. Um, we see God's faithfulness in the book of Numbers, even through the unfaithfulness of God's people. Um, God's people are not faithful. They're not believing all the time. They're not doing what God calls them to do, but that never keeps God from keeping his promises. And that's something we can rejoice in today. In Christ, all the promises of God have been fulfilled. In Christ, the full number of God's people is already redeemed and sealed by the Holy Spirit. And God will keep those promises despite our failings and strugglings along the way. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this book of Numbers and for what it shows us of your faithfulness. Help us to trust you and not ourselves. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, tomorrow we will be in Numbers chapter 2. Hope you can join us for that. Have a blessed day in the Lord.